Okie doke. Lastly, let's look turn this snap to absolute value off. Okay, let's look now at this snap automation. All right, switch it on. Actually, before I do that, I shall just delete all these regions by highlighting them and pressing backspace. Then I want to delete this track, so I'll highlight it and I'll go track delete. Okay, now I'll also delete those other bars, just backspace, and they're gone. Okay, now look. Let's zoom in. Okay, snap automation. Well, it's quite simple. If you put snap automation on, you're applying snap to your automation. So there it is. It's now ticked and on, right? And um, if I now put my track automation on by pressing the A key, there's my track automation. So if I draw in a node, let's say I draw it in near to this quarter beat marker there. Actually, I'll put this into beat, right? So I'm snapping to the quarter beats. Now if I draw or click to put in a node here, it will snap it to this nearest beat. Watch. There you go. And then when I move it around, I'm moving it by a beat at a time. Just like when I'm moving the region around, okay? You're moving it by a beat at a time. Okay. Or I can move it at divisions. And then it's moving in sixteenths. You know what I mean? Whatever. Okay. And without any snap automation on. Simply, it's free to move around. Like that. Okay, uh, the other thing is you've got this automation snap offset, which by default is set to minus five ticks, so that, that means that these little nodes are coming in five ticks earlier than they visually appear to be. And that's just to give them a chance to sort of get moving, do you know what I mean? It's only a tiny amount. But anyway, you know what I mean? Leave that. Just leave it alone. Alright, so I'll just delete these nodes. Go and delete that. First node, there we are. Right. Turn off my track automation using the A key. Right, there we are now. That now leaves this drag menu. And you've got overlap, no overlap, crossfade, shuffle right, and shuffle left. So let's now move on to those. Alright, by default, the drag menu is set to overlap. Okay, and what I'll do is I will draw in another little region like that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to color that different color so that we can see quite easily which is which so I'll just use alt and C to bring up my color menu that's holding down alt and click the C key opens and closes the color menu and then I just select that region and click orange and make it orange or click blue and make it blue whatever all right and then close me color menu Okay, we've got two regions. Now, drag is set to overlap, so let's see what happens. So I drag that region over that region, and basically they are overlapping. Simple as that, yeah? If I drag this region over this region, they are simply overlapping. Right, and where they overlap, the MIDI data plays. All right, and I'll show you that by just penciling in some MIDI data in this orange region. If you notice actually, look, see when I open the piano roll with this region selected, this line shows orange. That shows me the beginning of that bar. And if I choose this one, it changes to be green, yeah? All right, so uh, I'll draw in some notes there and I'll just draw them up at C4 and just make them little eighths. I'm not, again, using any fancy input method. I'm just gonna draw them in manually. Just a little row of eighth notes. Now you might be wondering, how come this region, these four notes are at G3, um, G3, and in this region, the four note, the eight notes are on C4, but they're lower inside the displays here. Well, that's simply because once they get up in height, they start at the bottom again. So don't worry about that. It's a bit confusing. But... Okay, so um, basically, look, uh, I'll now assign a sound because we haven't actually assigned an instrument to this instrument track yet. So I'll Hold down Alt, press L, and bring up my library. I'll go to Logic Basics, and I'm going to choose the EVP88 Electric Piano. There it is installed. All right. Alt L, close my library. Oops. Alt L, close my library again. All right. So I, with the overlap set in default in the drag menu, I drag this region over that. Oh, I've got them both selected. Sorry. Drag that one over that, and this is what you hear. 
Yeah, they both play during the overlap. All right, and if I drag this one over this, same thing. Where they overlap, there, both MIDI datas will play as long as the instrument's polyphonic. All right, so that's what overlap does. If we change this to no overlap, oh, and by the way, um, it's the same if I'm dragging this region over that one to make it longer. I mean, there's nothing going to play in this that I've extended, but the data underneath is just there. It just overlaps it, all right? Okay. If we change it now to no overlap, look what happens. If I drag the orange one over the green one, like, say, that much, no overlap, right? So what happens is, rather than overlapping, it's just chopped that one off at the point that I dragged it over, all right? It just chops it off because there's no overlap. But if I drag this back, the MIDI data is still intact. Right. It's the same again if I drag the front of this region over that. Again, no overlap, so it chops that one off. All right. Put that back. But if I drag this region back out again, the MIDI data is still intact inside it. But it doesn't work that way if I drag the front one over the back one. If I drag this one over that with no overlap selected in the drag menu, it does the same thing. It chops that one off rather than overlapping. But when I then drag this one back out, it's destroyed that MIDI data, it's gone. So if you drag the front over the back with no overlap, it'll chop it the same, chop it off the same, up to the point you've dragged it over, but when you bring that back to its full length, this this region, the MIDI data has disappeared, it's been lost. But if you drag the back one over the front one, the data isn't lost. It just simply doesn't play anymore. If I drag this one over that, okay, look, it's chopped it off, so that data won't play here because it's been chopped off. But if I drag this back out, the data's still there. Okay. So that's a weird one. I don't know if that's a bug, why they've chosen to do it that way, but anyway, that's the way it is. So let me undo that. Undo, edit, undo, edit, undo. I'm again not using um, Command Z. I won't do the key commands yet. Okay, we'll just come to those. All right. So that's the overlap and no overlap. Now the crossfade only works with audio regions, little audio parts, like rather than these MIDI parts. It doesn't work with Apple Loops either, and I don't want to get into importing a couple of audio regions now to show you that, so we'll leave that until we come to audio. But basically, in crossfade, when you drag one region of audio over the other region of audio, at the place where they overlap here, they will crossfade automatically. All right, So that's what it does. And that leaves these last two, shuffle right and shuffle left, and they really are uh, a big FCUK in the head. They they <laughs> really are mind baffling until you kind of figure out how they work. So let's lo look at those last two because um, they'll take a little bit of time to explain. All right. <laughs> 